my mother was a Sunday school teacher for 40 years when she was living. She used to always tell me, she said, God blesses you to become a blessing. But I didn't get it back then because I ain't had nothing. So he blessed me. What, when, Mama, we ain't got nothing. She said, but one day, son, you're going to be different. I'm standing here today because I learned something. I just try to tell people some real basic stuff to succeed. You do not have to be educated to succeed. So you can quit beating yourself up about your lack of education. Education ain't in the Bible. Harvard ain't in there. UCLA ain't in there. Now, if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, scientist, dentist, you got to go to school. We understand that. Maybe if you're gifted with your hands of healing, you do that. But what about if you like me? What if you like you? What if you ain't a school person? What you going to do? Suppose you got a learning disability. Suppose you dyslexic. Suppose you just don't get to. You know, I just didn't get math. Once you got past adding, subtraction, multiplication, and division, you lose me. I don't know. I only know what I know. I learned to identify this gift of mine. And this gift has made room for me. Now, I've told you that. But here is the other thing. Once you identify your gift, you have got to write this information down. If you do not have a vision board, if you don't have a dream list, I am telling you, you are complicating your process to getting what you want in life. You're complicating it because you are missing, because maybe nobody ever told you, or maybe you don't think that it applies to you, but a simple principle of success is that it has to be written down somewhere. Oprah was on TV for 30 years talking about these vision boards. Oprah, she got a billion dollars. I'm not, she has my attention. Now, like I said earlier, you don't got to be rich to be happy. Maybe your goal is not to make a million dollars. That's cool. But maybe you just need 150000 Maybe you just need 200000 I'm telling you, you have to write this information down. I don't care what church you go to, synagogue, temple, mosque. If you don't write it down, chances of it happening is slim. Could that be the one thing that's holding you back? If I'm telling you this, a dude with no education, I can't read a business periodical. My head will explode. <laughs> I don't even know what they're talking about. It's not what I do. Too many times... People have you focusing on your weaknesses. You're wasting your time. You ain't got to strengthen that. Work on what you good at. If you focus on what you good at, you'll make enough money. You hire somebody to be what you ain't. I got all kinds of people read numbers and contracts and all that because I can't do it. But I hired them. Listen, man, you've got to write this information down. Let me tell you what the reason writing it down is important because it plants the information in your subconscious. That means write exactly what you want. Don't deviate, be clear. If you want four cars, it's nothing wrong with wanting four cars. If you want three houses, you can have three houses. Why not? Why, why you can't have, why you just can't get a home? What kind of God you serve where he won't give you a house? It's just a house. Somebody asked me the other day, they saw my vision board. They said, man, where your dream car at? They in the driveway. They've been marked off the vision board a long time ago. The vision boards work. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you how this work. You don't think I got all these TV shows. I ain't making no money now. I'm out here hustling and grinding, but I'm willing to work. You got to write everything you want down. Now, if you want, like I said, you can go to school, try to get you another degree. I don't have one. I'm telling you what I did to get here. I learned a few scriptures that made some good sense to me. You have not cause you ask not. So you mean to tell me if I just keep asking you for it and believing in it, that's one way to get it? Okay, cool. Then you tell me faith without works is dead. You tell me if I believe in you and I'm willing to work, I should have it. But I can't believe in it and don't work and I won't get it. Okay, I understand that one. And then you tell me to write the vision and make it plain. I can do this. These are things you can do today that ain't got nothing. To, you don't need nobody's permission to succeed. To get to God, you ain't got to check with nobody.
He are, he available to you today. You ain't got to get cleared. His line ain't busy. You can talk to him right now. I do it all the time. That's how I got here. I'm telling you how you can get to where you're trying to go. Now you can go get your another education if you want to. You have to understand that every portion of your life is designed with a purpose in mind. You don't have dreams without test. You understand? And everything you're going through is God preparing you for what you asked for. So when you get tested, it's actually God preparing you for what you asked for. You got to have hardships, setbacks, missteps. See, the only way to learn how to get up, you got to fall. Learn, only way to learn how to get over, you got to be under. The only way to learn how to win, you got to lose. <laughs> only way to appreciate the laughter, you got to be crying. You would not appreciate the sunshine if it, do, if it didn't rain. You would not love the morning sunlight if it never got dark. It is designed that way in life, man. So you need everything that happens to you to happen in the exact order. You don't like it. I didn't like being homeless. I didn't like living in a car. I didn't like getting divorced. I didn't like losing everything twice. I didn't like none of that. But it was preparing me for a life he had for me. So having lost everything twice, I have a much greater appreciation for what God has given me now because I'd have done without it. So see, you appreciate, you learn. You got to have it that way. You don't learn nothing when you win it. You learn through failure. Failure is the part of the process people don't like, but that's the win. Michael Jordan took over 900 game winning shots. Michael Jordan ain't made but 147 of them shots. You ain't heard nothing about them misses. They only write about the wins, man. But he learned how to get them 146 by missing 750 times. You see what I'm saying? A baseball player make millions of dollars if he get to the plate and he's successful three out of 10 times. Three out of 10. He just got to get a hit three out of 10 times. That's, that's crazy. And you can make millions of dollars because they don't care about them seven times when you don't get them hits. What they pay you for is their makes that you can, you can miss. You can miss seven out of 10. But if you get three hits every 10 times you go to the plate, you finna make hundreds of millions of dollars. Ain't that crazy? Listen, getting successful, whatever you consider successful, if it's rich, whatever, it's not a magic trick. It's not God picks certain people he'll make rich and certain people he don't. He gives all of us as his children the power of choice. You have a say-so in that. You can decide to be rich. And with God's help, it's highly doable. But you first have to think it. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is here. I'm no better than none of y'all. I'm not a better person than you. I'm not a better Christian than you. God don't love me more than you. None of that. If you want to be successful, you have to change this. This has to change. Listen to me. It's not what makes it hard is your lack of belief that it can happen for you. The fact of it is, though, it's very doable. See, if but you got to change, though. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. So if you're at a place in your life and you ain't happy with it, you have to change some things. But you have to make a conscientious decision that you're going to change. And it's not dependent on anybody else. It don't matter what your mama think. It don't matter what your coworkers think. It don't matter what your siblings think. It don't matter what your children think. It don't matter. They have nothing to do with it. This decision is yours and yours alone. It's two people born in a hospital every day. It's a person that's born in a hospital that's gonna get a job and somebody born in a hospital that's gonna give them a job. You get to decide which one you are gonna be. You get to decide if I'm gonna be rich, poor, mediocre, plentiful, happy, sad. You, you have a decision to make. Your mind, all right, 
here we go. This is the teaching moment. Let me give you this so you can get on with your 2019. You walk in the house, you pick up the remote control. Let me teach you how this works. And you press the power button. When I told you 2019 will be the best year of your life, but you have to claim it. You have to expect it to be the best year of your life. You have to live your life with the expectation that great things are coming your way. And that's how it works. Now, let me teach it to you. You grab your remote. You press the power button. What do you expect to happen? You expect the TV to come on. Guess what? It come on. If you want to see Sports Center, Sports Center Channel 46, and you press 46 and OK or select, what do you expect to come on your TV? Sports Center. And guess what show up? Sports Center. They got the concept of creating a remote from the Bible. See, God is tied to all of this. You better understand what I'm trying to tell you now. The Bible says a man is as he thinketh. God created us in his image. God thought of this world. He thought of it, so he created it. So he made you just like him, that your thoughts can create things. Let me show you this. We all live inside a bubble, right? This is our world. We go to church here. We work over here. We go get our coffee over here. We go to this park over here. We usually go over here to, you know, hang out with friends. This is our favorite club. This is our world. This is our favorite spot on the beach. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. I love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things. That ain't, that ain't happening. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. Now, like I was telling you before, if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really, really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. You put extra on top of extra, uh, on ordinary and you come up with extraordinary. It's no other way. I'm sorry, but here's the fact. All of you have extraordinary capabilities. All of you. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in LA and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. They already making decisions about your life and your ass will sleep. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. Even in some of your darkest moments, when you make mistakes, you have got to stick around for the two things that the mistake is made for. Every failure is made for. Every misstep is made for. It is made for a lesson and a blessing. Them two things follow every single one of them every single time. God don't send down rain without a return. When he send down rain, flowers grow. To find your way in life is not an external search. It's an internal search. Because God equipped you the moment he gave birth to you. God equipped you at birth with what you needed. He gave all of you a gift. All of you. Every last one of you, you you're gifted. God never created a soul without giving them a gift. 
All of you sitting in here were given a gift at birth. He put it inside you. You ain't got to look under the ocean. It ain't on a mountain. It ain't under no rocks. He put it in you at birth. He gave you a gift. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. That's the thing you should pursue. The scripture says your gift will make room for you and put you in the presence of important men. That's what your gift will do for you. Everything else you're doing has nothing to do with what God created you for. And if you're unhappy with your life, if you haven't figured your life out, if you're thinking there's more to your life than it is, it's because the only reason you have that question is because you're not living in your gift. Once you discover your gift, there lies your greatest chance for success.